I'm Amy Stewart. Uh, Cop Sisters on the March is the fifth Cop Sisters novel and the first time I've really had to veer entirely into fiction to tell their story. The truth is that I don't know exactly what the Cop Sisters were up to during 1917, just as we were getting into World War I, but I didn't want to skip the war entirely because I think that women's roles during World War I were so interesting. So instead, what I decided to do was to put them into a real place among real people, but they were not actually there. Now, in the run-up to World War I, we didn't have a fully developed military like we do now, so there were these volunteer training camps for men called Plattsburgh camps. Well, a group of civic-minded women showed up at a meeting at the War Department and said that they'd like a training program for women who wanted to serve. Now, do you think that the men in the room were thrilled with that idea and couldn't wait to launch a program for women to serve in the war? No, they were not. So the women did it themselves. They organized committees all over the country and sent out surveys asking women if they'd like to serve in wartime and what skills they have, like nursing, cooking, sewing, driving an automobile, running a telephone switchboard, speaking another language. And would you believe it? Half a million women responded and said that they were ready to serve. So they created these military training camps called National Service Schools, where women would learn uh, signaling, they would do military-style drills, practice field medicine, everything, in fact, but fire a gun. So this novel places the cops at one of those camps, even though they didn't actually attend one. I also introduced the true story of Beulah Binford, who actually has a real life connection to the Cop Sisters. I don't wanna to give too much away about her story, but I will say that she was at the center of a scandal in 1911 that made headlines nationwide. Everyone in the country knew this woman's name. So I wondered, you know, how do you go on after a thing like that? How do you find a job or a place to live if your name is connected with a scandal that everyone's heard of? This happened a hundred years before social media, but it was the same thing. Everyone knew her business. She couldn't get away from it. I was fascinated by her story and I wanted to tell it, especially because she does have this little connection to the Cop Sisters. So I decided to write her into this book. Now, Beulah did not, as far as I know, actually go to a national service school. But over the years, there were all these where is Beulah Binford now type of articles. And in the run up to World War I, one of those articles said that she was going to join the Red Cross, serve overseas and restore her reputation. So how do you think that went? The Red Cross had to issue a statement that Beulah Binford would never be allowed anywhere near the Red Cross and that parents could send their daughters to serve with them without the fear of coming into contact with the likes of Beulah. So I thought, well, if she wanted to join the Red Cross, it's not too unlikely that she'd want to attend a national service school. And that's how I got her into the novel. As usual, you can read the historical notes in the back of the book to see what's real and what's fiction. And there's a lot more information on my website. I also do Skype chats with book clubs, so feel free to take a look at all that and get in touch with me. I hope you enjoy the book and there's a lot more to come.